desmoid tumors are rare soft tissue tumors. They really can arise anywhere in the body. Uh, the most common places for them to present could be your extremities. So whether it be the arms, the legs, you can also have a presentation in abdominal wall and also they can be found in the head and neck. So really anywhere throughout the body. Unlike cancer, which can metastasize, desmoid tumors don't have the ability to metastasize. However, they are very locally invasive. This basically means that these tumors can grow along fascial planes and they can be um, significantly problematic for patients. So while they are not typically considered life-threatening, desmoid tumors can be very debilitating for patients. They can um, significantly impact their quality of life. They can be very painful. They can decrease patients' range of, of motion depending on where they occur. So if they occur you know, close to a shoulder or close to a joint, um, it might be hard to move your arm. Um, and they can also be quite disfiguring. Um, you know, unfortunately, there are no FDA approved therapies for desmoid tumors. Um, a couple of reasons for this. I mean, again, it's, it's a rare disease. Um, it's really important to understand that these tumors are also very heterogeneous. So each patient's journey with a desmoid tumor can be very different. It might not look like the, the, another person's um, experience with a desmoid tumor. Um, so these tumors, because of where they can occur, they can grow quite large. They can present with symptoms or no symptoms at all. So some patients actually can live with a desmoid tumor that is very unproblematic. It's very slow growing and it won't cause any problems. On the other hand, you can have patients that have a desmoid tumor, even though it's small, it can be causing significant issues because of the proximity, for example, to a vital structure. Um, so again, the, the patient journey is very different and, and there is not one that is the same. Uh, because these tumors exhibit a wide variety of, of presentations, their management is very individualized for the patient. So I think you asked me how they um, actually can be diagnosed. So a, a patient's journey, for example, they might have a pain or some other symptom that uh, drives them into a clinic. They will typically be diagnosed with or identified, I should say, on a scan. So whether it's an ultrasound or a CT or an MRI scan, again, very typical with uh, other types of tumors, they can be identified that way. However, the true diagnosis of a desmoid tumor is really based off of a biopsy. So uh, a portion of that tissue gets removed from the tumor itself, and then it is looked at by a pathologist to um, make the definitive diagnosis for desmoid tumors. Um, again, because they're rare tumors, what you find is that there are not a lot of doctors that are actually familiar with them. Some doctors may have never heard of a desmoid tumor. So they may see a mass on a, on a scan and then go down a path to try to diagnose. So something we've heard from patients, you know, over and over again is that sometimes they have to see multiple um, doctors before they actually get a true diagnosis of their desmoid tumor. Um, sarcoma specialists, because these desmoid tumors are a class of sarcomas, so sarcoma specialists are really the, um, the professional that is the best equipped to be able to diagnose and treat uh, desmoid tumors.